Elinden geçilir Hasan Yardan geçilmez Hasan Yardan geçilmez Deneneniv At Martini Ey bre Hasan Dağlar inlesin Hello everybody, welcome to this slightly improvised episode A Paleo Profile all about giant sponges Welcome to the CM Kozeman YouTube channel If you're just in for this YouTube video Just know that I'm an eccentric guy, this is an eccentric channel I am also on many other platforms Well, here are just the links I'm also an artist and an author And if you like what you're about to see If you like my crooning, if you like my obscure investigations into paleo facts and related associations please also consider supporting me on patreon.com or buymeacoffee.com or go to the amazing merch store which you can find in the pinned comment and in the video description so let's go now i'm also an author you can also look at amazon.com for my books with my colleagues and if you're into paleo stuff like the stuff you're about to see here, you might enjoy our books, All Yesterdays and the Cryptozoologicon. Anyways, enough about this. Enough about self-promotion. Let's tackle the matter at hand. Basically, I am recording in the 24th of February 2024, a nice symmetrical date with a full moon on it. And normally I do live streams in these days, but where I live, in their infinite wisdom, the government decided to ban access to Twitch. So I was frustrated and just while walking around in Twitter, I found this tweet by one of my online friends, A.F. Whitaker. He's a really adept uh, paleontology and museum sciences researcher. And he was talking about this incredible fossil. It's, it was just this picture that gripped me, to be honest. This thing, this sort of 1920s or early 20th century gentleman next to this incredibly weird fossil. And apparently it's a colossal Devonian sponge. So, prompted by A.F. Whitaker's tweet, I launched into a kind of semi-frustrated research frenzy about this weird sponge because, you know, sometimes it really is the image that grabs you, that grips you. And unlike some other channels, I am really clear and candid with my sources on this channel. In fact, these videos are not directly monetized. So, if you liked, if you like the video so far, please consider following A.F. Whitaker on Twitter.com his tweet directly prompted this video. I mean, his tweet and the contemporary ban on Twitch access. Millions of nerds are weeping now. We, millions of nerds are weeping, crying in their mother's basements now. Anyways, he prompted this video, so thanks to AF Whitaker. Please follow him on Twitter. And another side tangent here, there's a very famous paleo channel in YouTube. And at the time of recording, he was implicated, let us say, for not just stealing the subject of his videos, which, okay, is it really stealing? I mean, if you see somebody do something and you want to do something about that thing, especially about an uncopyrightable realm such as Paleo, that's maybe okay, but this guy was apparently copying people's research articles and rephrasing them just a little and not even admitting it. And he only reacted when people confronted him about this. Anyways, anyways, that's a whole other drama, maybe not the best to get into it, but yeah, unlike that guy, I'm really transparent about who inspires me, and I guess unlike that guy, <laughs> what a loser, I can talk, I can talk improvisationally, this whole video is recorded on the fly, I can go back, forth, sideways, backwards, in, out, damn, <laughs> if you can't improvise, what are you even doing, you fool, anyways, Anyways, this is a giant sponge in question. There's something about this picture that's just so amazingly arcane, it's beautiful. Maybe it's this whole black and white aesthetic, the grainy photo, or maybe it's just a weird articulated spine or vertebrate-like thing. And maybe it's just the dapper gentleman on the right hand side. There's a comment attached to it. It says, the Burton sponge, full-size restoration based upon comparison of the original with other specimens allied to it. This is from the Chimang rocks of Algany County. So this is a reconstruction, not a direct fossil, but such a wonderful work of art. If, if I was a billionaire or a gajillionaire, one thing I would do is I would just pay people's college loans and buy random people houses. 
until I had like a safe three or four million left. Then I would make a big ass house and fill it full of books and I would decorate it with like carvings and columns much like this giant sponge fossil. It's named Ceratodictia and this whole research comes from John Mason Clark, uh, an esteemed American paleontologist. Apparently he authored over 300 papers and one of his most important work took place in a kind of collaborative encyclopedia called the Paleontology of New York and this guy was just one of the you know almost like too good to be true New Englander types with this incredible work ethic or maybe he was just lucky because of the founder effect we don't know but he named hundreds of genera and new species especially the whole field of um, sponges trilobites brachiopods and eurypterids these are eurypterids are giant sea scorpions and they're just amazing owes a lot to this guy john mason clark really based 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 pioneer of paleontology in the united states and actually another side note now when you're watching this video be aware that you know i'm a curious guy and one of the best things about free research in fact that's like my message between the lines here you know it's not about sea scorpions or sponges or people or whatever it's being able to research between the lines being able to go to side tangents and in doing so create something relevant and enjoyable and new for people who are following you so that's how it's done yes so one of the greatest contributions by john mason clark is this two state amazing volume it's an arcane book published in 1912 called the eurypterida of new york state it says Pal it's the sea scorpions of new york or eurypterids of new york or something and these two volumes are just full of these incredible drawings, incredible drawings of ancient Silurian, Ordovician, and maybe even Devonian sea scorpions, these giant, arcane, weird invertebrates, some, somewhere as tall as a door, just gigantic. It's, it was just, just a time in Earth's history when arachnids were making a bid for dominance. Of course, like life doesn't really operate in that term like dominance is a very human term but whatever there were a lot of giant arachnids in 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 the ancient oceans in those times and these were just fantastic in fact if you go to this channel and find the pan arachnid special podcast you might see more about the these incredible creatures long story short this guy who also discovered this giant sponge was also a big ass arachnid and a sea scorpion expert and it just happens to be that the fossil bearing rocks of upstate new york and some nearby states in the usa are extremely rich in these incredible incredible fossils i just love these animals so much i wish i was one of them N not gonna lie i wish i was like I this is my true form so yeah and of course it's impossible to see this and and not make the connection between some other literature produced in the united states a few decades later H.P. Lovecraft's incredible, incredible, well, Lovecraft is a tainted guy, but these stories are incredible in their own right. They pioneer the idea of non-human, pre-human intelligence on, on Earth. I mean, people wrote about such fantasies before, but Lovecraft was the first person to articulate them in, in this manner. And I think there's a direct connection, like Lovecraft was also an avid reader. He read anything and everything. Too bad that did not stop his racism, but anyways... He read anything and everything and it's I think it's impossible for him not to have come across this and I'm certain that these discoveries this these books maybe this guy's work kind of inspired Lovecraft to come up with his pre-human ancient alien races but there's really like no difference dang don't think don't ding in diggy diggy ding in diggy if you're watching this far please comment on the comment section please tell me I want you to be my giant sea scorpion Cosman daddy so we beat the algorithm and you know some fun comments are always to pass around so yeah moving on moving on remember this video is about giant sponges so this is john m clark's monograph a colossal devonian glass sponge there are also a few other associated articles in this volume a hemia aspidian crustacean from new york silurian water limes the geological age of the bonaventure form formation and rosetted trails of the paleozoic this guy was like a polymath he published about a lot of things and if you read the, his writing, it's very scientific but also very human and it's also almost written like a memoir and I, I really like science writing in this form. Too bad contemporary science writing is almost never this human, it's very cut and dry. 
I can understand it if you're maybe like recording experiments in chemistry or physics where you have to be like really clean and plain and reproducible, but I don't get it. I don't get it when paleontology is written in that extremely saltless and lifeless manner. Anyways, let's take a sip of the good old Cosman tea. Uh, and keep on reading. A Colossal Devonian Glass Sponge by John M. Clark. It's a pleasure to record the fact that this evidence of the immense size to which glass sponges of the Devonian plantations in New York grew was discovered by a venerable lady when well past her 100th year on her farm near Ripley, Chautauqua County, Mrs. H. A. Burton, Professor Dilbert G. Harris's aunt, so somebody's aunt, just up and went and discovered these sponge remains on her farm. It is to the kindness of Mr. Burton and the courtesy of Professor Harris of Cornell University, that's where I went to college, that this specimen is now in the State Museum and this opportunity afforded of public notice of this extraordinary fossil. I have termed this unique specimen the Burton sponge, but technically it appears to be representative of the genus Ceratodictia, and then it goes on with some technical descriptions of this gigantic sponge. And of course, as in the money shot, there's this image which kind of got me involved with this whole giant sponge shenanigans. Anyways, it's just really nice that, you know, the guy does a hat tip to Melina Burton, the, the guy's aunt, basically, some, some ref associates aunt. These little human touches, these little human details like that really add up to any sort of writing, I think. Because remember, you're writing for people and you can include little details like this without derailing so much. And I don't think it takes away from the academic rigor of any sort of writing anyways. Once again, the thanks for these sections go to my online friend AF Whitaker. These images are directly from his research beneath his tweet, so yeah, go follow AF Whitaker on Twitter. It must have been a really wonderful and magical realm, like this kind of like dream palace of sponges and columnar growths and strange creatures cavorting among them. I think such a scene is best representative by this particular painting by Emiliano Trocco. Go look his art up, he's an incredibly talented artist too. And he's one of the rare painters these days that paints with traditional media, he paints with oils. In that respect, in an age of digital art and AI art, I think he's one of the last true artists. And to my knowledge, one of the few, if not the only artist using traditional art exclusively for paleo art. So yeah, and you see how this kind of rendition really brings the sensibility of those fossils to life in a in a way that digital art can never do. I mean, you write on dead wood trees, you print stuff, you disseminate stuff, and then you paint them on actual paintings. I think that's the way it ought to be done. Anyways, let's look a bit deeper into these glass sponges John M. Clark is talking about, the glass sponges of the Devonian era in New York. So glass sponge is a term related to the skeletons of these sponges, which are composed of these like lattice-like structures of silicone, basically woven together into a basket. And of course, when the animal is alive, flesh grows around it, like, like so. So you don't really see these. By the way, sometimes in curio shops, you come across these glass sponges and they always look fantastic. The very coolly named clade Hexactine Lida. And this is how they look like when they're alive. And they come in many weird shapes and forms. In some shapes, the silicone glass structure is just the stalk or the stem, and the fleshy parts just grow in a kind of blob on top of them. They really look surreal. They really look like some random stuff generated by AIs, or some of those little quirky weird details that surrealists, surrealist painters in the early 20th century used to add around their work. But they're all real, they're all alive, and they're still thriving in the world's oceans, especially in the deepest parts and their skeletons are composed of these tiny interlocking silicone fragments and they also look like, well, works of art on their own behalf, like some sort of demonic crow's feet or like some spaceships or stuff. If an alien civilization came flying in from the vast gulf across galaxies, I'd predict their ships to look like this, like imagine this, but it's like 100 kilometers long. That's what an alien spaceship looks like in my in my mind's eye and this group is extremely varied and their skeletons are just beautiful beautiful to look at the amazing hexactine lida group and actually there's a gigantic representative of this group too called monorafis kuni monorafis means rafis means like stylus or 
read or stalk it means single stalk and I don't know what Kuni means maybe it's a allusion to a person or I have no idea so it looks like this a sing single huge stalk of crystal silicon crystal surrounded by these fleshy growths in museum specimens it looks like this and when I was googling for images of this thing really at first I was confused I thought like okay why where is the animal why are all these people holding these uh, measuring rods and what are they posing against you know I thought this was like one of those steel measuring rods or these aluminum measuring tapes or whatever turns out wait a minute this is the animal this is the skeleton just look at it this nice lady is holding it and it's not a measure or a scale bar or whatever it's the single silicone strand of these amazing creatures themselves and this is what the living part looks like after it's dried up in a museum collection and apparently these things grow really slow and some specimens of this monorophis sponge might be over 11,000 years old making them potentially some of the oldest living things ever to exist just fantastic and for this tidbit of information you should go follow this cool website called the deep sea news at deepseanews.com looks a bit nostalgic now in this day of uh, tiktok and youtube videos and stuff it's an actual blog about deep sea life really nice website go visit it today sponges just amazing imagine a setting in which these are grown for use as weapons or swords or like you have to master the way of the glass lands or something just fantastic anyways by the way sponges are not a single group what you call sponges are actually several different and quite unrelated phyla quote unquote if, if phylums make sense anymore so if you go this is the this is a bigger tree of life all animals are here all jellyfish and some related species related groups are here and what we call sponges is actually a fake made up fake ass name and actually the hexactinellida are like one separate group in this larger organization of mobile very primitive animal forms the true bath sponges and other sponges we know more familiarly today come from this one group called calcarea yeah but yeah we just saw the hexactinellida group and as much as I want to do it, I'm not going to go into a deep dive of sponges now. Maybe if we can make some hot new intro videos, I can consider making a CM Cosman sponge special, but yeah, not gonna happen today. Anyways, there still are some gigantic sponges living today, such as this Zestospongia muta, also known as the cauldron sponge. Now these guys are not the glass sponges, they're from that Calcarea proper sponges group, so they're really cool, you can like sit in them and just vibe I guess I'm, I'm certain they have like loads of associated commensal animals there too just fantastic and then sponges are so understudied that each day and each year there are new discoveries and one of them was this 2015 discovery of this gigantic sponge probably it was a new species so apparently it was the size of a, a minivan it was found off the shore of Hawaii by the NOAA they could not classify this properly they call it Roselidae species. Roselidae is this one family. And it was just, I mean, just, oof, I live and die for this stuff. Look. I mean, the texture alone gets me going, and don't don't get me started on that. Just so, mmm. I mean, ooh, the giant Hawaiian minivan-sized unknown sponge. You can see there are like some sea stars and stuff crawling around on it. It's one big, one big family all by itself. A one big, cool, happy ecosystem. Another cool picture. It's just vibing just vibing there this this thing is probably very old too and like I think the researchers were really blessed to see it so there and it was the size of a minivan so if if we consider this screenshot get on board everyone it's sponge time yes anyways giant sponges in any form they're visually very appealing to me I, I hope you enjoyed it too I hope you enjoyed my brief uh, sprawling look into this understudied growth in this understudied group of animals and if by the by the off chance you are interested in zoology biology and the life sciences yourself maybe you could make it a career move to study these animals for your phd or your master's thesis there's certainly a lot to be discovered about sponges and they're way more than these whole riddled yellow things you use in the bath some species grow very weird forms shape sizes some apparently even are predatory and have these like venus flytrap style mouths but just underwater 
So just bizarre, yes, and beautiful. In some part of my heart I wish all animal life just stopped at this stage and we did not have anything more mobile. It was just a world of sponges, just vibing. Imagine going swimming there, it would be fantastic. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this part and if you come so far, please comment. I like giant sponges, so we know you watched so far. Thanks for watching and thanks once again for even thinking about contributing to this channel on Patreon.com CM Kozeman or my other venues. This was a short video, but I think it was fun. It, it was really fun to make and just talk. Really, really a nice evening spent discussing sponges and the incredible maddening diversity that is life. And once again, please consider adding my friend AF Whitaker on Twitter. That's it, everyone. Goodbye for now. Have a nice day or night wherever you are.